You know, we, we didn't think, I want to become this or that. You just work hard and you're praised and you're happy. And um, you're promoted. You don't even know why you're promoted. This is, of course, is very different. You have to plan your career. You have to take control of your own career and know what it is that you want to do. Those days, we were just mentored and, and nourished and, and grown. Um, and I loved it. And But in a sense, I wish I'd known some other things that it's good to think about yourself. It's good to plan your life. It's good to say, what do I want? Um, and one of the things I, when I met a young woman or even older women, I say, be very sure that you have your financial security, you know, have a recurring income, have a nest egg. We've seen with the pandemic. So for me, those are things I didn't do. I wasted a lot of money doing my hair, weave after weave, looking good, nail polish every Saturday, 3,000 shillings, Bogota, you know, OPI, there was a nail polish called Bogota, OPI you know, pedicure, manicure, those things are so fleeting, you know, I wish I'd created that nest egg to then invest and buy Tuproti, you know? So now as you can see on my paint, my painting, that's my Tuproti because a lot of friends and people I know, particularly men, bought plots in little places, Kawasukari, Wapi, now they are worth a lot of money. So understanding even as you work, think about that you'll not always be 20 or 30 or 40. You're gonna be in your mid 60s like I am and you're going to get old and you'll need insurance, you'll need medical. You'll be looking after aging parents. That's a struggle many of us at our ages are looking at. I'm with my mom who's 86 years old. We thank God he's kept her well, but I look after me and my, my, my siblings and that's an expensive route. And there are others and things that happen. So I think also getting fulfillment. So to me, fulfillment of what you really enjoy and financial security, for me, those are important. I, I enjoyed working, but I'm not sure I enjoyed the work. Today you ask me about oil and gas, people say, oh, Mary's an expert, oil and gas, you know, because later I went into Petroleum Institute where I was general manager, we helped found that. I went into National Oil as the MD. I went into as an international civil servant, you know, with my red plate guard at UNEP doing also clean fuels and vehicles. But today, if you ask me about oil, I don't even remember, I don't like it. I don't like anything to do with oil and gas. Oh, I find it so boring, please don't talk. And I did that for close to 30 years. 17 in Exxon, five, four or five at the Petroleum Institute, four in National Oil, five in the, in the um, in, in, um, UNEP, makes maybe what, 24 or so. I, I really, don't tell me about oil, I don't even want to hear. You know, what really now makes me happy is helping people. You know, somebody calling me and saying, Mary, I implemented that, we discussed. Remember that idea? And we discussed it and, you know, I got some inkling and I got my aha moment and today I achieved it or I did this. I love it. In fact, I had a call today, somebody called me and they told me, remember that position? We've been working with them and it's a good friend and I recommended them somewhere. And they told me, I got a call, I got it. I love it. I just went, yes. So when people do what they love to do, I think I, I say what I do is, um, I give clarity to big ideas. People come to me with an idea of what they wanna do, and then we discuss it. I help them structure, I help them think. I challenge them with questions. I challenge them with thinking a different way. I bring a kind of an insightfulness or awareness of themselves and what they love. I question them about their strengths, and by the time they leave, they say, you know what? I got my hair moment. I know exactly what I want to do and how I want to do it. So that's what I love. If I could, you know, I do it free, but I'd love to do it for more money because <laughs> I need the money. We all need the money. Yeah. And I know I'm unusual. It was very easy. It was very good. But I'm also, as you can see, a very talkative lady and I'm from Nyeri and a very opinionated, very confident. And it's the way my father brought us up. As I told you, the God was very early. So we were treated the same. My father, there was no difference between boys and girls. Four boys, two girls, very, very strict. Not those short men from Nyeri that are tough. Eh? Uh, there was no nonsense. It was tough. Holidays, you know, those boy, those girl, on a party were off. Nini, girls, and you cook one day and the other one cleans the house. The next day you change over. I mean, that was a strict, he was very strict regime and um, particularly so in education. So for, for us, we grew up being quite assertive, being able to have to claim your place in the family and be strong. And, and, the, and us, the nuns encourage us to do the same. Limuru girls encourage us, it's a whole girl school to be the same. So I really never had that upbringing of a woman's place, a girl's place, because we didn't live with a mother or aunties or anybody. 
we just thought this is the way you are, you know, bold. In fact, when I joined S, I used to be smoking, the only one smoking on the boardroom. And I remember my boss trying to tell me, eh, they had never seen, first of all, there was a first lady executive signed on. Then I'm smoking. The man are smoking, say I smoke. Then he called me to say, you know, those things, a woman, a girl, you're very nice, you're 22 there, you know, 23, can you do it in the bathroom? I said, yes, and then came back, I lit my rights, you know. <laughs> now I think, how awful. So I didn't have that. If anything, they really welcomed me. I always say that if you find, and I say 80% of people are good, majority. So when you find good people, most men want to champion women. They want to help them develop. So almost this, of course you'd have your normal quarrels of work. They're usually work related. I haven't had any, you know, you say about sexual harassment. Of course you've had somebody trying to touch your breast a bit and you go, hey, and then they back away. I've never had sexual harassment. I've never had being discriminated because I was a woman. I was always very articulate and very kind of aware of myself. And I think when you call out people, you don't get that reason. It's when I think you are being nice, you keep it to yourself, you don't want to talk, you tell somebody else instead of telling the person. You know those challenging, difficult conversations are difficult, but sometimes you do need to step up. I didn't have any issues. I was encouraged, I was promoted. 